Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 31 of Learn Lightroom 5. And in this episode, we're finally going to process a night image. And I apologize, it took me so long to do this episode. I had a lot of requests for it. The reason why I haven't done one is I really didn't have any good night images to process. So I actually took this shot a little over an hour ago. And as you can see, it's really underexposed. And one of the things I found when I was getting emails from people is they, their night images were almost always underexposed. It's real easy to underexpose your night shots. So I purposely wanted to have one underexposed so I could show you how to properly process it in Lightroom. Now, if you happen to uh, take a shot and you have it perfectly exposed, you could still watch this video and learn how to process the image. There's only one step I'm going to do that's going to be different for this underexposed image than I would have done if the image was perfectly exposed. So, you know, stay tuned, You'll s and I mention what I'm doing when I do it that you don't have to do. The other thing I want to add is I get a lot of emails where people ask me why do I never have the histogram showing in Lightroom? And the reason being is I'm one of those people that have it showing on my camera. So when I take a shot, it shows the image on the back of my camera, but it also shows the histogram in the top right hand corner. And I religiously look at that histogram when I take shots. And I expose for the histogram. I want the histogram to be a certain way for a certain shot and I'll make sure I um, use exposure compensation, be it negative or positive, so I get that histogram where I want it. Now in this case, I wanted it, this shot underexposed. So I expose to the left, they call that. So the histogram is really strong to the left, and that's why it's underexposed. So um, I encourage you to learn how to use the histogram in your camera and use it um, you know, to get a properly exposed shot, or at least the shot exposed the way you want it. Now, we're going to process this image. We're going to start in the basic panel like we always do. And the first thing I do when I do night images, I look at the part that needs the most work. Sometimes I overexpose night images a little bit. And if I did, then the highlights need the most work. I have to get those under control. In this case, since it's underexposed, the shadows need the most work. I gotta do something with the shadows here. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna go to my shadow slider. And as you guys know who watch my videos, I have a formula for daytime landscapes where I um, put the shadows all the way up and the highlights all the way down. I do not do that for the night shots at all. What I'll do is I'll move the shadows to the right until I get the shadows the way I want it. So I just keep eyeballing my shadows and I keep moving the slider until I get it to where I want it. Now as you can see I have it all the way to 100 and these shadows still stink. They're horrible. So this is that step if you properly expose this where you just move the shadows, move the slider wherever you need it to get the shadows looking the way you want it. You're done. Since I moved it and they still don't look the way I want it, I have to go to the exposure slider and I have to add exposure to this shot. And I have to add quite a bit. I had it, I had it pretty well underexposed. Now, I added 1.75 stops of exposure and I think I have it, you know, decent in here. It totally ruined the sky, but don't worry about that. We're going to come back and fix the sky. All I'm concerned about is these shadows. So I want this exposure slider to the right now, you know, to over, you know, add some exposure to the shot so I get the shadows and I can see some detail in here. Now I'm going to go back to my shadow slider and I'm going to move it around a little bit. And I think right around 65 now is good. I got enough detail and the lights are still, you know, shining bright. Everything's good, so I like that. Now my next thing as I look at the shot that I have to do is the highlights. They're a little bright, especially in uh, Buffalo City Hall right here is very bright. So I'm going to have to turn highlights down. So again, I just look right here where I'm concerned. I don't care about the moon being too bright. I'm concerned about City Hall. So I'm going to go to the highlights and I'm just going to look at City Hall and I'm going to keep pulling them down until I get City Hall 
where I want it, which happens to be at 100. Now it, it minus 100. That's just a coincidence. It's not a formula or anything like that. So just keep sliding that highlight slider down until you get the highlights where you want. Now the next thing I'm going to do is the white and black point. And um, I'm going to do it like I always do. I'm going to hold the Alter Option key down, and I'm going to do the blacks first because that's really where I had the most problems in this shot, and I really am concerned about that. So I'm going to um, go down, and as you can see, right on, on zero, I'm getting some um, black over here. So I'm leaving that alone. I'm not even messing with that. Now the whites, similarly, I'm going to hold the Alter Option key down and click down on it, and as you can see, we have a lot of bright parts in there. So I'm going to bring those down just a little bit. This is just a matter of taste. You know, don't nothing's written in stone. You just try it out, look at the shot. If you don't like how it looks, go back and move it again. And you don't have to hold that alter option key down. You can just side these around and eyeball it and see, you know, get it to a point you like it. You know, it's your artistic vision and I encourage you to express it, express it at all times. Don't do something cuz you think, you know, Tony Morganti likes it. Do it because you like it. Okay. Um I have this middle part now of the image processed, even this ice, the ice here. Uh, this is a uh, the Erie Basin Marina. There's a marina in um, summertime to the right. There'll be, you know, boats in the marina. But right now I have this uh, middle part exposed the way I want it, processed the way I want it. I'm done with that. I am going to add some clarity now. And you could add quite a bit of clarity, but be careful of haloing that you don't get these this halo around the buildings any verticals tend to get the halo around them so I could turn the clarity up quite a bit and I'm gonna add some vibrance I'm gonna make these a uh, yellowish lights a little more yellow and I'm gonna make these lights that have a tinge of blue I'm gonna add just strengthen that tinge of blue just a touch by bringing vibrance up I'm not going to mess with saturation. I almost never do on an evening shot or a night shot. Um, there's a lot of contrast already because we have, you know, very, it's nighttime. We have dark buildings and we have lights. So we have a lot of contrast already. So I'm not going to go too crazy on the contrast slider. <laughs> Excuse me. I am going to add a little bit and see what it looks like. And right around 15. Plus 15 is fine. So I am done with the basic panel. <clears throat> now, since I exposed or I processed for this middle part, the shadows and all, I, I think I got the sky a little too bright. So I'm going to add a graduated filter. So I'm, I'm going in and fixing the sky, like I said. And I'm going to probably like maybe three quarters of a stop. And I'm just going to pull the um, graduated filter down. And actually, well, maybe we'll just try it. Just slide it around. Try it out. I kind of like it right there. Right at one full stop. So now we have this kind of natural look. The city is glowing, so it's going to add, you know, this kind of brightness up in the immediate sky above it. But as you go further up, it gets darker. And that's very natural at night when you're shooting a city. So um, very, you know, I like that look. I like the way that looks. The um, ice is properly exposed, I believe. The um, shadows in the middle, I like the way that is. This is all personal taste. So you just adjust, as I showed you how to adjust the sliders, the way you like it to get it to the, look the way you want it to look. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to do anything with tone curve, the HSL, or split toning. Nothing, nothing needed to be done in this shot. I am going to go to the detail. And in episode 5 of Learn Lightroom 5, I think it was episode 5, I do these sliders in detail. So I encourage you to look at that. For the sake of time in this episode, I'm just going to do the quick and dirty sharpening and noise reduction. That's where you move sharpening somewhere in the 70s and luminance noise reduction somewhere in the 40s. And that will give you a nice sharpening and noise reduced shot. Um, I shot with a D800E and it, it really is noise free. So I probably could, could get away with no noise reduction to tell you the truth. But I'm going to, you know, add it. I'm going to show you how to mask. I'm, I really don't have to mask out the sky. But if you found when you were sharpening that your sky got a lot of noise in it, you can mask it out 
by holding your Alt or Option key down and clicking on this mask slider, masking slider, you see that screen turned white. Everything that is white is getting sharpened. Now as we move it to the right, you can see now we have less um, items being white, so less items are being sharpened. And just right around there, you can see that the entire sky now that isn't a star or the moon is um, not being sharpened. So that's fine. Fine with that. So that's fine with the detail slider. Next things we're going to go to lens corrections and I'm going to enable profile corrections. You can see that it's going to get rid of any of that um, barrel distortion or pin cursion distortion that might happen to be there. I'm going to remove chromatic aberration. It doesn't hurt to click that. I don't know if there is any there. I don't think there is. The other thing is it's a little crooked. You can see this side is a little lower than this side's a little higher and this building's leaning a little bit to the right. So I'm going to click Auto. This takes a second to render. And you can see it straightened it out nicely. So I'm happy with my lens corrections. You guys who know me know I often put a vignette on the shot. I'm not going to do one here because I have this dark part up here and I have this darker part down here. And it's kind of natural the way it is. And I like it. it, it you add a vignette so that the um, viewer's gaze is drawn to the center of the shot. The way it is now, the very bright part of the shot outside of the moon is right here in the middle anyway. So I don't need to add a vignette. Everyone's going to be drawn towards the middle of the shot. What I am going to do though is I'm going to go down to camera calibration. Now if you shot in RAW, you're, you hopefully will have some different camera profiles in the RAW file that we could take advantage of. Not all manufacturers have them. Not all manufacturers have the same exact ones. If you shoot Nikon, you should have Adobe Standard, Camera Landscape, Camera Neutral, everything I have here. If you shoot Canon, you're going to have similar ones. They're going to be worded different, but I probably do almost the same thing. So you go through and check each one. One thing I should note, I get a lot of email from people that shoot Sony, and they're shooting RAW files, and they have one or two choices here. I can't remember now. That's just the way Sony is. You just don't, um, they don't have camera profiles that they save in the metadata of the RAW file. So unfortunately, if you shoot Sony, you're not going to have much choice, much opportunity to do anything here. Also, if you shoot JPEG, you won't have any choice at all. So that's why, one of the many reasons why I encourage people to shoot RAW files. Okay, we're going to try them out. Let's try camera landscape. And it takes a second to render, and that's kind of cool. It kind of made a little more blue, and it just kind of emphasized the city a little more. I really do like camera landscape. Camera neutral, I don't like that at all. Camera portrait, and it's a little better than neutral, but I still don't like it. Camera standard, that's kind of cool. kind of like that one. Camera vivid, I really like vivid. Okay, let's go. It's between vivid and landscape, so we'll, you know, just go back and forth to them. I think I like Vivid better because it was brighter in here. So I'm going to go to Vivid and you can see it brightened it up a little bit up in here. And that's kind of natural. The city is glowing out into space. So it's going to be bright, bright, bright and get darker as it goes up. And I like that look. So that's it. I am done processing this image. So remember, if you did expose it properly in camera, which I hope you did, you didn't make mistakes or get it underexposed like this, just skip that exposure adjustment. So just um, skip this exposure slider. Just leave it right in the middle. So look at your image. If do whatever needs the most work. If shadows need the most work, do shadows first. If highlights need the most work, do highlights first. And then when you're all done getting the highlights and the shadows done, then fix whatever you broke because you adjusted those. In this case, I broke the sky. The sky was really too bright. So I added a graduated filter and, and got it the way I like it. So that's it for episode 31. I'd like to thank, really thank you, thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. And if you have time, go over to my website, anthonymorganti.com. I got all kinds of photography stuff over there. And if you haven't already, please go over to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate that. That's it. I'll talk to you guys soon.